Hey everybody, welcome back. It's time to get into one of the most well-known and widely celebrated Supreme Court rulings in all of American history, Brown versus Board of Education. Go ahead and smash that like button. Let's set the stage for this case by going even further back in time. In 1896, the court made one of its most reviled decisions ever in Plessy v. Ferguson, wherein the court upheld racial segregation on the separate but equal principle. Specifically, the case dealt with a state law that racially segregated train cars. The majority in that case admitted that the whole point of the 14th Amendment was to establish racial equality before the law, but held that segregation didn't represent inequality or inferior treatment to black Americans. And among the many Jim Crow laws of state-mandated segregation that resulted from this decision were laws in many states segregating public schools. The legal fiction was that these white schools and black schools were separate but equal. But we all know that while they were definitely separate, they were anything but equal. The facts of the case are very straightforward. Black students in several states were denied admittance to certain public schools based on their race. Several lawsuits were consolidated into the case that we know today as Brown v. Board of Education. The case is named for Oliver Brown, whose daughter, a third grader named Linda Carroll Brown, was denied admittance to the white elementary school just blocks away from her home, instead having to be bused to the black elementary school farther away. In this landmark case, a unanimous Supreme Court held that racial segregation of public schools allowed by the separate but equal principle of Plessy v. Ferguson was unconstitutional. The court reasoned that racially segregated schools violate the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. In fact, the majority opinion written by Chief Justice Earl Warren declared that separate but equal segregation was inherently unequal and therefore unconstitutional. But notice that this ruling was specific to the area of public education. Broader policies outlawing segregation in other areas of life was still a ways off. The court's opinion in this case is unique in that it relied more on social science than on precedent. For example, focusing on the detrimental effects of segregation on black children. And it was written in language that could be easily understood by non-lawyers, because Warren realized how important it was that people across the country could understand the court's decision. The case's impact was similarly unique. The court ordered the desegregation of public schools. However, one of the unfortunate legacies of this case is that it shows the weakness of the court as policymaker. Many states simply refused to desegregate their public schools. Governors openly defied the court's order in Brown v. Board, and some places even closed their public schools altogether rather than follow the court's order. For the first five years after Brown, virtually no schools complied with the desegregation order. It wasn't until other parts of the federal government took action to force states to abide by the ruling, and then additional court rulings gave further instructions that the South began to slowly abide by Brown v. Board. Most notably, President Eisenhower's decision to send U.S. troops to integrate Little Rock High School in accordance with the court's ruling. All right, well, that's it for this one. Until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.